Hi, I'm Gary Malkin from wisdomoftheworld.com. I'm Hope Fitzgerald, spreadinfinitehope.com. And together we are u-awake.com, mastering the art of change, and also the host of the Graceful Passages workshops, From Grief to Grace. We're going to be doing these videos because there's a lot that we have to say, right? So I wanted to say more about what awake means to me, you awake. You know, I could have easily gone to my grave without ever really noticing that I wasn't in my body for most of my life. Now, now how could that be really possible? <laughs> the phrase not in our body seems a little bit woo woo. And what do you mean you're not in your body? That's crazy. But what I've learned is that the trauma that happened for me way back in the womb or at birth, which happens a lot for a lot of people, creates a new neuronal pathway that says, well, if I'm not going to have anybody to share this birth with, because my mother was knocked out completely with anesthetics, then some force inside of me as a, as a being said, well, I've got to line up to something. And I just created a pathway to me to source itself and said, my way is out of here. And that somewhere up there is going to take me through this. And I think it stayed with me until the last few years when I started realizing that my relationship to the ground of being was completely challenged. And that is a form of sleeping. Mm. And I just want to say that if, if with all the work that I've done in my life, that I could be that uh, unawake in my body, in my mm. cells, in my mitochondria, mm -hmm. where are you not awake? Mm -hmm. Could it be that you're not awake to your connection to source, the exact opposite of me? Mm -hmm. Could it be that you're not awake in your capacity to have a full range of human emotions? There might be some part of you that has decided at an earlier time that it wasn't safe to have your heart engaged. That's my share of the moment. How about you, Hope? Oh, wow. Oh, ways that I have, oh, geez. You know, it's really <laughs> the feeling of the onion. The old metaphor is so, so true. We, we, have circumstances in our lives that tend to shut us down and sequester off and then we have circumstances in our lives that bring us zooming back in to the present moment and realizing how cut off we've been and then it's a real trick to sort of figure out how to keep those pieces embodied like you say Gary said, keep those pieces in the mix so they don't get wandering off again and so I I think some coaching around that, you know, and, and figuring out some tools to help to help keep all these pieces together. And so that wow, you know, we are really I'm gonna be woo woo because I am woo woo, but you know, we are multidimensional beings. That means we can be living in pretty high up or how far out places but we still get to be these human beings in this juicy life full of sensations and of all kinds. And, and you know, <laughs> from my experience with talking with those who are no longer embodied, um, they all want to get into humanity again, to taste and to touch and to feel, to feel that love connection, that heart connection that they don't have access to in the same way that we do as human beings. So this may be a little far out, but, but that's really what I found to be true. And so these uh, processes that we have developed are intended to, to give a step-by-step roadmap for how to get back in together with all your pieces in your body still very spiritually aware and and that typically puts us into a state of joy so hey, well y'all before we close i just want to say the new woo woo is the new wow <laughs> on that note we'll share with you some more things but i really want to ask you think about what does it mean to be awake for you and what is on the horizon for you about your awakening? Yeah, yeah.